chapter number three, the shooting. So, so far, chapter one, we've been introduced to our three farmers. Chapter two, we've been introduced to Mr. Fox and Mrs. Fox. We've heard a little bit about her and we know that they have four cub foxes, four baby foxes. So in chapter three, it's titled The Shooting. Well, my darling, said Mr. Fox, what shall it be tonight? I think we'll have duck tonight, said Mrs. Fox. Bring us two fat ducks, if you please. One for you and me, and one for the children. Ducks it shall be, said Mr. Fox. Bunce's best. Now, do be careful, said Mrs. Fox. My darling, said Mr. Fox, I can smell those goons a mile away. I can even smell one from the other. Boggus gives off a filthy stink of rotten chicken skins. Bunce reeks of goose livers, and as for Bean, the fumes of apple cider hang around him like a poisonous gas. Yes, but just don't be careless, said Mrs Fox. You know they'll be waiting for you, all three of them. Don't you worry about me, said Mr Fox. I'll see you later. But Mr Fox would not have been quite so cocky had he known exactly where the three farmers were waiting at that moment. They were just outside the entrance to the hole, each one crouching behind a tree with a loaded gun. And what is more, they had chosen their positions very carefully, making sure that the wind was not blowing from them from towards the fox's hole. In fact, it was blowing in the opposite direction. There was no chance of them being smelled out. Mr Fox crept up the dark tunnel to the mouth of the hole. He poked his long, handsome face out into the night air and he sniffed. <laughs> he moved an inch or two forward and stopped. He sniffed again. <laughs> he was always especially careful when coming out from this hole. He inched forward a little bit more. The front half of his body was now in the open. His black nose twitched from side to side. Can you make your nose twitch? He found. He, his black nose twitched from side to side, sniffing and sniffing for the scent of danger. He found none. And he was just about to go trotting forward into the wood when all of a sudden he thought he heard a tiny noise, a soft rustling, as though someone had moved a foot ever so gently through a patch of dry leaves. Mr Fox flattened his body against the ground and he laid very still, his ears pricked up. He waited a long time but he heard nothing. It must have been a field mouse, he thought. Or some other small animal. He crept a little bit further out of the hole. Then further still. He was almost right out in the open now. He took one last careful look around. The wood was really murky and very still. Somewhere in the sky, the moon was shining. Just then, his sharp night eyes caught a glint of something bright behind a tree, not far away. It was a small silver speck of moonlight shining on a, on a polished surface. Mr Fox lay still, watching it. What on earth was it? Now it was moving. It was coming up and up. Great heavens, it was the barrel of a gun. Quick as a whip, Mr Fox jumped back into his hole and at the same instant the entire wood seemed to explode around him. Bang, 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 bang. The smoke from the three guns floated upward in the night air. Boggus and Bunce and Bean came out from behind their trees and walked towards the hole. Did we get him? said Bean. One of them shone a flashlight on the hole and there on the ground, in the circle of light, Half in and half out of the hole lay the poor, tattered, blood-stained remains of a fox's tail. Bean picked it up. He got the tail. We got the tail, but we missed the fox, he said, tossing the thing away. Oh, poor Mr Fox. He's lost his tail. I've got a nice illustration here. A skinny Mr... Is he Bean? Even I can't remember yet. Bean picked it up, yes. Pencil-thin Bean picked it up and tossed it away. 
not happy with the fact he's just got the tail. He wanted the fox. Dang and blast, said Boggis. We shot too late. We should have left we should have let the fly we should let fly the moment he poked his head out. He won't be poking it out again in a hurry, Bun said. Bean pulled a flask from his pocket and took a swig of cider. Then he said, I'll take three days at least before he gets hungry enough to come out again. I'm not sitting round here waiting for that. Let's dig him out. Ah, said Boggis. Now you're talking sense. We can dig him out in a couple of hours. We know he's there. I reckon there's a whole family of them down in that hole, Bunce said. Then we'll have a lot of them, said Bean. Get the shovels. And that takes us to chapter 24, which is called The Terrible Shovels.